Arizona Wilder, who spoke for us last August in one of our very first public speaking engagements, gave us part of the story of her life. The title that we, I've given to it, or, or uh, I felt was appropriate, but she can change it if she wishes, is Bizarre Experiences of a mind Control Slave. We're all, we're all familiar, at least somewhat, with the mind control area, the mind control program, but not nearly into some of the absolutely unthinkable experiences that people go through. Give her a nice warm round of applause and welcome her back again to give us additional information on what she has learned, what she can now share with us that she didn't last year. Here comes Arizona. Hello. Uh, can everyone hear me? No? Now can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dean, for having me back uh, again this time at Global. Um, last time that I spoke here to the general audience, um, I simply went through and told people why I was doing what I was doing, what had happened to me. Um, and what I have to say about that at this time uh, is that there were a lot of other things that happened uh, besides rituals. Uh, there, were, there was programming at bases. Uh, they used military bases um, because they won't have any interference uh, when they have someone on a military base. And a lot of my programming took place on a military bases. And I would like to talk about that. Uh, I would like to talk about the fact that there are rituals done at the military bases also, and that rituals are not a cover for mind control programming as some survivors have been saying publicly lately. The people that do the mind control are involved and very rituals are very much a part of how they do things. For example, naval intelligence members or people that are in naval intelligence are usually very involved with Ordo Templi Orientis. And that doesn't mean that everyone in naval intelligence is involved in that. But naval intelligence is responsible for a lot of overseeing of ritual activity in this country. And they are responsible for a lot of this going on. There are other organizations, other um, agencies involved, but naval intelligence is very involved. Uh, I would like to show some slides today of my artwork depicting what was happening, some of what was happening to me. And this artwork, is it was done in crayon, pencil, pen, paint, whatever I ha could have my hands on at the time. It was done while sitting on the floor. It was done while being in the hospital. It was done while a anywhere that I could do it. And I did it as quickly as I could because these things that were coming out of me were overwhelming. And I couldn't write about it. I did keep a lot of, of journals. But some things I couldn't write about, but I could draw. So I drew them. And there, there's a lot to be said for the drawings because there's something that can say what words can't say. It, would, it wouldn't do it justice to try and describe in words what the pictures can show. Um, 
I also, before we start, I, I would like to uh, make a point about something. I'm not, um, I'm not usually a speaker. Um, I work full time, and I have a, a very busy life. Um, and this is coming here and doing this. This is the second time I've spoken to a, a larger audience. Um, I've been asked, why don't you write a book? I, I'm not particularly um, driven to write a book. Um, there's a lot of complexities in, regarding my feelings right now that I am still trying to deal with. Um, and I am doing this right now. I'm speaking out because of my children having been taken away from me. And this, I'm not the only one. So I think I feel, uh, I feel that other survivors have lost their children in the same way because this is one of the first things that they do. And this is why I'm speaking out. I'm definitely not doing it for the money. This is not something that I would want to be known for. So, I think that it speaks for itself, and I'm telling you right now, this is a serious thing. It's not a game for me. Uh, it's, it's, if anyone in the audience feels like they can't watch some of these things, then they're free to leave. Um, and I won't, I'm not offended by it. But I'm just letting you know right now that I've had some reactions to these pictures, but I've picked out the tame ones. So, um, why don't we start? Okay, this first one is an example. Um, this is how I felt as a child, and this is how I felt most of my life. This was a picture. Uh, that I just drew to express how my mundane life felt. Um, I had no life to speak of. I had a lot of missing time. I couldn't figure out my feelings. I couldn't figure out anything. And this was about the first picture I ever did uh, dealing with uh, what was coming up. Okay, this picture is important simply because of the few pictures that follow. Uh, I had um, a part called Alice. And it turned out that it was Alice in the Gray Place. Alice in the Gray Place mystified me because I knew about Alice in Wonderland programming. But I didn't know what Alice in the Gray Place meant. And I had a lot of journaling to figure this one out and drawing. So this, it took a few years to figure this one out. Okay, the next thing that I realized that was coming up with this for some reason were dolphins. And uh, a lot of survivors have spoken about uh, dolphins in their experience and being taught to communicate with dolphins. And this was done on military bases. And this is what happened to me also, that this was coming from a military base. And I still hadn't put it together. So I knew that there were dolphins. I knew that they were gray. And in that way, I realized that there was a connection to Alice. Okay, what I realized and what I've discovered over the years is this is in particular pertains to Area 51. At Area 51, there are a lot of dealings with alien extraterrestrial life. 
and also on Area 51 